A cordial greeting. Today is Saturday, August 3, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In this video, I would like to talk about several tropical waves that we will be monitoring over the next few days. Especially, this active tropical wave currently located at 50 degrees west longitude, which will continue its westward trajectory. Eventually, once it reaches the Western Caribbean Sea, it may encounter marginally favorable conditions for development. At the end of the video, we will also talk about another tropical wave that could find favorable conditions for development in the next 7 to 10 days. But first, I wanted to mention that we have Tropical Depression Number 4 currently over Cuba, which will soon move towards the states of Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. It is expected to become Tropical Storm Debbie. If you want to know about this forecast and its impacts across the southeastern United States, I invite you to watch a video I recorded earlier today. Now, let's talk about the main region of cyclonic development, which, as we have been announcing for several weeks, will become quite active in the coming weeks. This is due to a more favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation, which is beginning to move over the Atlantic. Although it currently continues to favor the eastern Pacific region, this energy will continue its eastward movement over the next few weeks and will create very favorable conditions for cyclonic formation in the main development region. In fact, we are particularly concerned about the third and fourth weeks of August, where models are projecting an extremely favorable phase for strong tropical waves to emerge and find favorable conditions for development in the tropical Atlantic. Additionally, remember that sea surface temperatures in the main development region continue to be above normal, as we can see in this graph, with values almost equal to what we saw in 2023, which was the historical record. In fact, on average, in the main development region, temperatures are already well above the maximum typically reached during the month of October, and these waters are projected to continue warming over the next two months for the peak of the season. Let's then look at the visible satellite animation of the tropical Atlantic region. Here we have the first tropical wave, which remains quite strong and which we started monitoring yesterday. Also, see that there is still some dry air and Saharan dust in the tropical Atlantic, but definitely in much lower concentrations than we have seen in recent weeks. This tropical wave will continue its trajectory westward over the next few days and will bring a heavy rain event to parts of the Lesser Antilles. Models are projecting that in the next five days, between 60 to 100 millimeters of accumulated rain will fall, especially for the islands south of the Lesser Antilles and Trinidad and Tobago. And although the National Hurricane Center has not marked this area as a region of interest for cyclonic development at the moment, it is very likely that eventually, when the tropical wave moves further west into the Western Caribbean Sea, it may find better conditions for development. First, because Saharan dust concentrations are extremely low across the Caribbean Sea. And secondly, because models continue to project that wind shear will be well below normal, represented in blue in this graph. Low Saharan dust and wind shear, combined with sea temperatures well above normal in the Caribbean Sea, could generate at least marginally favorable conditions for development. It is important for residents of Central America, Cuba, and the Gulf of Mexico to monitor this tropical wave over the next week. Some models are already beginning to project some type of development. For example, here we have the latest GFS model projection. On Tuesday morning, it has the tropical wave crossing over the southern Lesser Antilles and eventually moving just north of Venezuela and Colombia. In the latest projection, the GFS model even develops a tropical depression just northwest of Jamaica, and in the long term, moves this system into the Gulf of Mexico. However, the GFS model has not been consistent in this development. Although in recent runs, we have seen it occasionally develop a tropical depression in the Western Caribbean Sea. We also have the European model projection, which has the tropical wave crossing over the Lesser Antilles on Monday night and then moving into the Western Caribbean Sea. In the latest run, the European model has a low pressure, perhaps a tropical depression, forming east of Nicaragua on Tuesday night or early Thursday morning then moving this low pressure over parts of Nicaragua, Honduras, Belize, and the Yucatan Peninsula. Due to land interaction, it remains quite weak when it reaches the Bay of Campeche. Also, in about 10 days, it has another strong tropical wave just east of the Caribbean, but we will talk about this system later. Other models, like the German model, also have a low pressure developing north of Panama and east of Nicaragua by mid-next week. If we look at the ensemble members of the American model, see that some of them do develop a tropical depression or tropical storm. However, this represents between 15 to 20 percent of the members. Thus, the probability of development remains low, but I suspect that soon the National Hurricane Center will mark this area as a region with possibilities of cyclonic development. Also, note that there is considerable uncertainty, so at the moment we cannot forecast what its trajectory and effects across the Caribbean and Central America might be. We will continue to monitor its evolution. The ensemble members of the European model also develop a tropical depression or tropical storm, 
note that there is a great dispersion in different scenarios, and in terms of probabilities, the ensemble members project that there is between a 50-60% to 60 chance of a tropical depression developing in the Caribbean Sea over the next seven days. Thus, we will definitely continue to monitor this tropical wave as it moves across the Caribbean Sea. Again, there is no imminent risk, and we have several days to monitor its evolution. As atmospheric conditions continue to improve for cyclonic formation, we will also be watching another tropical wave that long-term models project will move through the tropical Atlantic and could also find favorable conditions for development as it approaches the Caribbean. However, this is a very long-term forecast, talking about the second week of August, but it coincides very well with what we have discussed about the Atlantic entering a hyperactive period by mid and late August. The ensemble members of the European model also see the development of some low pressures starting from the second week of August in the area east of the Caribbean. Thus, we will be watching closely. Remember, this is entirely normal as we approach the peak of the season, and as we have forecasted, the Atlantic this year is very favorable for a hyperactive season. Well, with this, I say goodbye. We will continue our special coverage of the future tropical storm Debbie and the effects it will leave in the southeastern United States, while also keeping an eye on these tropical waves to see if they have the potential for development in the Caribbean region in the medium to long term. Well, with this, I say goodbye, but not without first recommending that you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the videos. Go to the bottom of the video, click on the red button that says subscribe, and then click on the bell to get notifications when I record new videos. I hope everyone has an excellent weekend, and to our followers in Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina, stay tuned to Hurricane Info for more updates on Tropical Depression Number 4, which will soon be Tropical Storm Debbie. See you in the next video.